How are we doing? All right? Okay. Now, I'd like uh, Twyla, Kylie, Samantha, and John Jr. come on up and sit here, please. Mr. Mike Baker. Those crutches are just props, everybody. <laughs> I have to have some notes, you know. Squirrel. Sorry. <laughs> but anyway, uh, hello, everybody. My name is Mike Baker. Uh, when John was selected last year to be inducted into the Men's Senior Baseball Hall of Fame, uh, I was very honored that he asked me to do his induction. Uh, he was just beaming with happiness. Uh, you could feel how much it meant to him. And for those of you that were at his services on the 10th, I want to apologize for repeating a few things, but there's a lot of people here that weren't there. So real quickly, I know a lot of you know that John was a Marine, a very patriotic guy. Um, he's the lead singer in a rock band, and I'm, I'm, I'm including the big hair, the stretchy pants, the elevator shoes, the makeup. <laughs> so you should check it out. It's pretty interesting stuff. <laughs> Also a wonderful husband and a father to three great kids. But today we're here to talk about John Daly, the baseball player. John absolutely loved baseball, and he loved this league. Uh, he'd play on as many teams as he could fit during a season, travel to multiple tournaments annually, uh, the World Series, Florida, Vegas, you name it, he was there. O over the last 30 years, I've, I've seen him uh, in the early years on the Rebels and the River City Bandits, which I, I really love the picture that was just posted of his River City Bandits in the 90s. He still had the wristbands on 30 years ago, never misses them. <laughs> love that. Uh, he, he was on uh, so many different teams, the Rebels and the Bandits in the early days, and then to the Rockets, the Bombers, the Braves, the Royals, the Free Agents, the Mud Dogs, the Cal Expos, and I'm sure a whole bunch more that I failed to mention here. This league was his happy place. This is where he wanted to come out with his friends and do what he loved. And uh, John, John could flat out hit. This guy could swing the shillelagh. Uh, he hit for power. If you had John on your team, he was going to be in the, the three, four, five slot in your batting order somewhere. Um, he had this little close stance, and then he just explode on the ball. It was just amazing to watch. I love watching him hit. And uh, there's a lot of pitchers sitting out here I know that are pretty uncomfortable whenever John stepped into the box to hit against you, too. I see a whole bunch of them out here. Uh, they, they always thought they could throw him in slide, inside with that closed stance, and then John just explode on it, hit a double into the left center gap, and be standing on second base smiling. That, that was just John. But uh, I, I, he also hit quite a few home runs in the early days. I mean, quite a few home runs in the early days. He had such great speed playing as a younger player as well that, especially in the younger years, if he got a single or he got a walk, a couple pitches later, he was going to steal second base and be on second anyway. It was almost like you needed to just start him there because you weren't going to be able to keep him on first base. Defensively, uh, John could play as many different positions over the, everything out there. I think I saw him play everything except first base in the decades that we played together. He probably played there too, but um, he's also a very tough player. Uh, never complained, played hard all the time, played through the aches and pains. In fact, Kepi on our team uh, affectionately nicknamed him the slab of granite, and that's just what we called him all the time. Actually, when he first, when he got that nickname, he finally got hurt. It was probably some little minor injury, like a hernia or something. But um, he probably missed one or two games from it. But we started calling him Gravel just to mess with him. But uh, his talent, another thing, Kepi was telling me about a dream he had the other night regarding John. He said he woke up in the middle of the night, and at the foot of the bed was... John the Angel standing there in full uniform looking at him and Dave said, John, what are you doing here? I thought you were in heaven. And John said, oh, I am, I am. He goes, the, the fields are perfect. We have double headers every day. Great guys, great players. And Dave said, that's awesome. He goes, why are you here? He goes, well, I just stopped by to tell you you're starting game two on Saturday. So. 
Sorry, Dave. But anyway, John's talent was only half the reason people wanted him on their team. It was the kind of person he was, the kind of teammate he was. He, he was this great player in the league, but yet he was so incredibly humble. He would always rather talk about you and what you were good at, not about what he was good at. He was, he was just never like that. Um, he was also uh, the example of sportsmanship. And I think Alan's going to talk a little bit more about that later on tonight. Uh, he never argued with umpires, never argued with other players, never anything like that. Just that same squinty-eyed, happy smile, smiling everybody, wanted to be friends with everybody. That's just how he was. He was just so happy to be out here with his friends that it just, it just happiness just came off of the sky. Uh, he greeted everybody with a smile. He always cared more about other people than he did about himself. He also had a, a great sense of humor. He was either involved in or the root of many practical jokes over the years. I can share a couple of them with you real quick. Uh, Greg Yardley, a lot of you guys know, he rocks the, the clean-shaven head. And it was down in Arizona, I believe, at the house after a few beers. Somebody had left this big strainer full of cooked spaghetti in the sink. John decided to grab a handful of that and slap it right on Yardley's head. And he said, there, now you have hair. <laughs> I always love that story. Uh, he also had, uh, he was guilty of the Borba Laundry School down there where he took his uh, clothes, threw them in the dryer with a couple of Tide Pods and turned it on. And like John, it doesn't really work like that. You got to put them in this other machine first. So tried to wash his clothes in the dryer. That was hilarious. <laughs> The Halloween candy. John always bought, because we play around Halloween down there, this big bag of 200 pieces of Halloween candy in it. Am I getting too much feedback here? Yeah, move up a little bit. Please. Sorry? Anyway, he took all the little chocolate M&Ms out of there because he knew Kepi liked them, and he and his partner in crime, Terry Callahan, proceeded to sneak behind Dave's back and put chocolate M&Ms in every single compartment of his gear bag, his shoes, his batting gloves, everything. I remember the following season, Dave going into his bag and finding more M&Ms hidden in other parts of it. That was all courtesy of John Daly. He just wanted to laugh, and, and he wanted you to laugh with him. And, and besides playing baseball, that's what we did the most was laugh. I, I truly believe if he were here, the one thing that he'd want to tell you is thank you for all the moments, the memories, and the happiness that this game brought him, because you could just see it on John's face whenever you were around him. I said it at John's service, and I'll say it again. John made this league and this world a better place by the kind of person he was. The world needs more people like him. And with that, I'd like you all to help me welcome John Daly into the Men's Senior Baseball Hall of Fame Class of 2021. Congratulations to all the other inductees tonight. Um, baseball has been such a bliss, blessing to us and our family, and I know it was to Dad. Um, you know, road tripping on his baseball trips, and I just got all into all kinds of stuff. But, you know, it really brought us closer together as a family um, and introduced us just to all these wonderful people. So that's really what it's about. And that's, Dad loved that more than the game itself, I think. Just the people. Um, so I'm going to read uh, what he had written. Um, so yeah, there it goes. Uh, I was born and raised in South Sacramento. Uh, played winter ball at six years old for Bob Statham on the Bobcats. I then played ball for Willow Rancho Little League. And then South Sacramento Babe Ruth, uh, making the 13 to 15 year old All-Stars at three years. I was selected to the Babe Ruth Hall of Fame in Hamilton, New Jersey, playing for Gady and Sam Brandon Junior High Schools, uh, where I pitched my first one hitter. 
Instead of playing at Kennedy High School, we moved to Elk Grove. Since playing for Elk Grove baseball team, I was once selected for honorable mention to the All-City team and won a baseball championship uh, at Elk Grove High School in 1981. Instead of following an offer from UOP for pitching, I decided to pursue a music career and then military life with USMC. After completing, completing this part of my life, I got reacquainted with my high school love, Twyla Curtis, and we had three awesome children together. We have been married 34 years now. I started playing hardball again at 28 years old for the NABA Baseball League. After two years with the Bandits, I then played with Alan Van Ness, my Marine Corps brother, on the Bandits. Oh, on the Astros, sorry. We couldn't win a game, but we had fun just the same. <laughs> playing with the Giants, uh, NABA for four years, I decided to move to SMSBL in 2000. Playing in this league with a couple different teams and then a couple Elk Grove teams with Eric Guimont, Eric and I decided to join Alan and, and Steve Fisher, which created the Rockets, all over some Coors Light. After five years, I decided to play with my old friend Mike Baker in Auburn Braves. Loved playing with this team, but decided the driving back and forth became too much. <laughs> I now play for the Sacramento Bombers, yes, back with Eric Guimont, and the free agent Sunday team. Tournament, te tournament teams I played for and presently are the Auburn Braves, Sacramento Royals, Sacramento Dragons, Sacramento Bombers, and different father and son teams. I've accumulated three World Series rings, two with the Braves in Arizona and one with the Royals in Florida. I have been an MVP in two All-Star games and MVP in the Florida World Series. I would like to give special thanks to God and Jesus Christ, my lovely wife Twyla, my kids John Jr., Samantha, and Kylie. I would like to thank my parents for their everlasting love and support and the rest of my family for enjoying all this with me. Uh, my baseball family means a ton to me. Thank you to all the guys and wives for making something we love so very special. God bless you all. Hey everyone. Um, while we're taking these pictures and getting ready here, those that were at the funeral will know that we're going to have a John Daly Sportsmanship of the Year Award starting next year for the best sportsmanship in Sacramento MSBL. That's going to be an honor of John Daly from here on out. And I'm sure everybody here would agree that nobody would uh, have the example of sportsmanship like John did to the officials to his opponents and to the team. And if you didn't drink Coors Light, he had a Pepsi for you. He had water for you. I mean, he took care of everybody, even the umpires. <laughs> so anyway, um, congratulations. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you, everyone. Another reminder, um, the family brought a cooler of beer, just like John does. It's out in the parking lot. And there's a couple of Pepsis in there for Bobby Wooden. I don't know uh, if you all knew this, but he also ordered a Hall of Fame ring. So that's for you guys too. And look at both sides. <laughs>